Ahnung. Hello, my name is Robin Vincent and welcome to Molten Music Technology. Today I'm finishing off my opus on Bitwig Studio 2 by sort of reviewing and demonstrating the multi-touch facilities within the software. Bitwig is quite unique in that rather than just allowing a little bit of touch or single touch or even multi-touch on a console, they actually create an entirely new paradigm. They've built in a system which makes multi-touch far more interesting. It creates kind of a, a new way of doing things. So rather than just replacing the keyboard and mouse, it creates a different way of working, a different workflow that's very, very interesting. And so in many ways, it makes it the absolute ideal door to be running on the Microsoft Surface Pro. I'm demonstrating it here on the Surface Pro 2017. It's an i5 model, fanless, eight gigs of RAM. But of course, if you've got a Surface Book or a Surface Book 2 or an i7 version, you're gonna get even better performance than what I'm gonna show here. But CPU performance is not my focus in this video. What we're looking at is how well the touch workflow works. Is it helpful? Does it give you things you can do that you can't do with mouse and keyboard? Is it a streamlined workflow or is it all fudgy fingers and finger marks everywhere? That's what we're gonna try and find out. So just as a taster, I'm gonna run a demo song and have a little fart around with my fingers just to just show the sort of things we're gonna be looking at and then we'll get down to the details and look at everything individually. All right then. So yeah, there's a lot going on in there, which is nice. So let's have a look at different parts of the program. First of all, starting off with the Arrange page, which is, is here. It's your classic Arrange page. There's nothing new and exciting about it. And I've done a full review of Bitwig Studio 2, which you can find in the YouTube channel. So I'm not going to go into the, the whys and wherefores and how things actually work. I just want to show what touch brings to the party. And what Bitwig have done is introduced a radial menu. So see what happens when I stick my finger down. We have this lovely thing which appears all the way around my finger, giving me all sorts of different options. Now, what's interesting about this is that it really requires two fingers or two hands to work. In so many other doors, you use fingers like you do a mouse. So if I want to move something, I, I tap on it and, and move it about like so. And Bitwig works in a similar way, but it's more intelligent than that. It gives you more options than that and actually you have to start employing more fingers because it has a properly thought out touch interface it's not just replacing a mouse it's doing something else what do i mean well if i want to move this clip as i just did there i actually have to drag in the right direction either left or right and then i can move it wherever i like because if you see on the radial menu that comes up i've got these little arrows here that denotes that i can move it to that and i can then move it around wherever i want it to go if I was to go up, I would actually start writing in the timeline and selecting time. If I was to go down, I could then actually start drawing around and select a whole bunch of different clips together because that's a different aspect of the radial menu. To go to the outer ring here, I then need to use another finger. So for instance, all of those clips that I've now selected, I can go for the copy button and I can take off an entire copy of all those and place them somewhere else. Or alternatively, I can use the trim tools here to pull off that side and pull it that way or to trim it in the other direction. But I have to do that using two fingers, not one finger. So it's, it's pulling me in, it's pulling me in deeper. It's doing more than what a mouse or keyboard would do. It's allowing me to employ my hands in this multi-touch environment. 
Now initially it's possible for that to be a little bit disconcerting because you're expecting just to be able to pick something up and move it and oh no I haven't picked it up and moved it because I went up I've now activated something else if I pull down to move it no I can't because that's selecting stuff and that's different so there's actually a new way of working that you have to grasp a little bit so your first steps will probably be a bit stumbly but once you get the hang of it this little radial menu is extremely handy and really quite efficient and that idea that idea of the of the circle of the radial menu around your finger or the pen as well that works in a in a similar way that comes up and in fact you can probably see that a bit clearer from above of course there's pinch to zoom as you'd find in most software that works very well but the radio menu also continues into other places so for instance my track list over here you may notice that the controls for it have now formed this little circular thing if i tap on that again the little menu comes up revealing itself around my finger because of that issue that when you're using your fingers in any door your fingers go over the thing that you're trying to control making it difficult to see the knob you're trying to control or the parameter you're trying to change and this completely solves that by throwing out those options around it so i can now go to solo or i can tap and go right to mute it unmute it and i don't actually need the menu to reveal itself to do it i can do it very fast i can just tap and move and it will do it you also have record enable over to the left and you have automation revealed underneath Automation, of course, is wonderful with touch. You can just get straight in there and draw it properly with your finger. No messing about. And as we know, we can automate absolutely everything within Bitwig. So that is immediately powerful. There's another menu for each track as well that if I'm not pressing on this circle of stuff here, I get a few more options. I can copy the track. I can add an instrument track, add an audio track. I've also got a little fader that I can go to, which gives me level control over that individual track within the arrange page rather than having to go to the mixer page so all of these facilities within the arrange page are extraordinarily powerful it enables you to arrange your music your clips to use the tracks and the channels to record enable to set things up to change levels to mute and solo to arrange your project all with your fingers all quickly and efficiently without having to feel like you're compromising by not using a mouse Part of the new features within version 2 is this customizable menu that appears at the top. It's very, very useful for touch. In previous versions, you had to dive around in menus to do some tasks, which was already pretty good in Bitwig because the menus were nice and large. But now you can pin all sorts of actions to this customizable taskbar at the top. So if I select something within the arrange page, the options that I have in the toolbar change to reflect that. So under clip, for instance, I've now got a whole load of stuff that I can do and it's all finger size friendly. And any of these commands I can pin to the taskbar. So if I want to, for instance, have quantize, I can attach that directly to the bar and now it's there at any point. So I can select something, go quantize and it comes up, I can choose it and go okay, and it's done. That tool is directly there on the toolbar. Very, very finger friendly. I can also use it to add a MIDI track, to add an audio track, or to do other editing tasks. I have undo and redo, they're ready to go, as well as copying and deleting clips. Now, in other videos I've done in the past, when I'm using doors, I generally have to create myself an elaborate toolbar just to do very basic tasks, like copy, paste, like undo, like opening various windows. And that's okay, but in Bitwig, this kind of toolbar at the top means that you don't have to do that. You don't have to open up a third party app to try to get around some of the limitations of touch. It's all built in there and it's all very finger friendly. In Bitwig, of course, the other side of the arrange page is the clip launch page view thing, which you get to here. We have a more of a sort of an Ableton Live vibe where you've got uh, clips and loops and scenes and you can trigger them all together or individually. Obviously with a finger, that's pretty easy. Now I should stress at this point that you can hit any part of the clip in order to make it happen, in order to trigger it, which is not like Ableton Live. In Ableton Live, you have to make sure you hit that tiny weeny little bastard play button to get it to play anything. Whereas here, anywhere, we'll do it, either scenes or individuals. Here's 
It's easy. It's very, very easy. Everything's the right size. It's, it's just great. It's perfect for touch. They've nailed it as far as that's concerned. Now within here, you also have your radial menu. So if I tap and hold on something, I can move in either direction to move that clip around, or I can pull off a copy. I love that action of pulling something off. That, that really appeals to me for some reason, and I can place that somewhere else. There's no trim in this mode because you don't really have that in the clip launcher, but I can also rub stuff out by going over there and delete it. If you want to select a clip for editing rather than trigger it, you just have to hold it that little bit longer and you've selected it rather than triggered. So trigger, select. Once we have selected something, of course, we can hit the big edit button up here and it will take us to the piano roll view if it's MIDI or the audio sampling slicing mode view if it's audio. And in here, we have similar tools that we can use. I can add notes very simply with my finger. I can drag those to be different lengths. Or I can edit them after the fact by tapping on them and then trimming like I did with clips in the arrange page. And again, I can take a copy off. Or perhaps what's better is to tap in space and then go down to select. And then I can run my finger over a whole number of different notes to select them and then tap and hold to pull off a whole bunch. Like so, undo. That undo button, would you believe a fingerable undo button? No extra special toolbar, just an undo button. That's all, that's all I'm after and there it is, awesome. You can also get your finger involved in editing velocity. If you have a note selected, then you'll just move whatever stalk is relevant to that selected note. If you don't have anything selected, then you can sort of drag your finger along and move them as you go. Similarly, if I bring up an automation lane, I can edit that, but there is a little bit of inconsistency here where I can't seem to get it to work with my finger, but I can get it to work with the digital pen. Whereas if we went back to the main arrange page, I could draw in with either the pen or my finger. So there are some differences then in how the pen and the fingers operate, although it's not always entirely clear what those differences are. Let's move on to the mixer. Now in the mixer view, you can see or display all sorts of different things. You can display the devices at the top of the track you've got currently selected. You can also show the clip launch editor in a more of an Ableton Live style. -y. Let me turn off the devices for a moment. And yet there you've got a nice view with lovely big meters. Now there's nothing special about what you can do in the mixer. There's no real radial menu that comes up. Instead, you've got multi-touch control over as many faders as you can get your fingers on because everything within Bitwig is multi-touch. You can touch as many things as you like. I can be fadering this while adding a delay to that particular track, for instance, or changing the pan on it. Whatever I want to do, it's all multi-touchable. But that also highlights one of the things I don't like particularly about Bitwig, which is that you can't resize the mix of faders. You're stuck with this stubby thing here. That's all you've got, which is a shame because having a longer throw would make things more accurate, sort of smoother, more efficient. It doesn't have to be quite this level of stubbiness because you can't always see exactly what's going on. However, what does work really well in here is kind of the Ableton Live view, which is if you remove parts of the mix, so you've just got the level and perhaps the sends down there. I've then got my scenes and my clips at the top. And now it's working in a different way. So I've got my scene selection down the left-hand side rather than across the top, which works like Ableton Live does, although Ableton Live has it on the right. Are you still with me? But for live performance using the mixer in this orientation with just your faders at the bottom and your clips in the top is brilliant. It beats Ableton Live hands down if you want to get your fingers involved on your screen. Rather than having to have a launch pad or a push or some other different form of controller, you can get straight in there and control everything directly with your fingers. 
and that's superb. One last section to look at then, and that's the play. The play page, now this doesn't exist, or rather it didn't used to exist when you're running Bitwig as a, a regular door program. It's only appeared in tablet mode. However, in version two of Bitwig Studio, this view is now available to anyone. So you might have a touchscreen attached to your, to your regular desktop computer, and rather than trying to run in total tablet mode, you can now run with a single sort of touchscreen display, which gives you access to things like the play view, which gives you a much more sort of versatile working environment. And what the play view does, it gives you somewhere to have a touchscreen play of things. So here's a drum kit. Like so. Or you can pick up something like the bass here. But you probably don't want a drum pad to play the bass sound, so we'll bring in perhaps a piano. Or you can have it with... different octaves showing at the same time, or you have this weird isometric kind of keyboard. Let's start with a nice clean sheet and deal with this in a little bit more detail. So I've stuck in a uh, electric piano. Now this of course is, is multi-touch, so I can play as many notes as I like. If I put it as a normal keyboard, It provides me with the ability to play whatever I like. And now the, the position that I play it in affects the velocity. So because glass isn't generally speaking velocity sensitive, instead you have it in the positioning of your fingers. That of course works better in this particular view. If you're using it in the isometric view, you don't quite have that velocity open to you. But there are other advantages to the isometric view which escape me at the moment. But apparently it's very popular and people like it. Now the other factor that comes into play when using the touchscreen to input notes is that it is MPE compatible. Yes, and multi-dimensional expression is what this is all about. What does that mean? That means that you can transmit individual pitch and timbre information about the notes that you play polyphonically. Normally speaking, if you do a pitch bend on an instrument, on, on a MIDI synth or whatever, it affects whatever's being played. With MPE, you can pitch shift notes individually and also affect different parameters individually per note, even though more than one note is playing at the same time. And that's really very cool. It's what you find on all those rolly keyboard strange spongy things and that is built in directly to Bitwig. Now you need to have a synth which understands and responds to that and the synth engines within Bitwig do so. So that's handy. So a very, at a very basic level you have pitch bends. If I hit something, if I drag to the left and the right, it changes the pitch. And of course it does it individually. But pitch is not the only parameter that you can access. You can also access pretty much anything you want using a forward and backwards motion. So as you can see, I've got a little line that comes up as I go forwards and backwards, and that refers to timbre or timber or whatever it is, however it is that you say it. I don't really care. I'm going for timbre. That's just how I was brought up and I can't help it. But you use that through Bitwig's fantastic sort of modulator side of things. So we can open up the modulators, open up an expressions, and now I've got velocity, release, pressure, and timbre, and I can allocate those to different things. So the velocity that I was using before doesn't have to be allocated to velocity, it could be allocated to something else. But in this regard, I'm just going to use timbre, and I'm going to apply that to the filter. That always seems a thing, so I'm going to tap on that, I'm going to move the filter all the way around. And now... Meow. 
as I push forward, I have control over the filter. And one and different notes differently. Now when you use the pen, there's another parameter you can edit, which is the pressure. So let's bring my expressions back into a different synthesizer, the polysynth within Bitwig, which is awesome for MPE. I'm going to apply the, the Tombra again back to the cutoff. And then pressure, I'm going to apply to say noise. So I'm now applying both noise and cutoff just by using my pen here. I can't do it with my fingers because there's no pressure sensor. The pressure sensor is in the nib of the pen and so that's where that happens. So in the right hands, that's pretty cool. Is it all good? Unfortunately, not quite. You see, while the interface and the connection and the multi-touch elements are excellent, there is nothing else like this on the market. No other door does it as well as this. Perhaps Stage Light would be another one to look at as something which integrates touch really well. But Bitwig is the only one that has developed its own sort of way of working in order to intelligently cope with the idea of using your fingers and throughout it is excellent. However, they came up with all of this in version 1.35 some time ago. And in version two, and now we're in version 2.2.2, there's been no additional development to that. And that's a shame because there are areas where the touch is a little bit inconsistent. What your fingers do compared to what the pen does can sometimes vary and trip you up and you're not quite sure which is working with which. Two of the key new features within Bitwig 2 are track heights and crossfades. Neither of those things are accessible via touch. You can't do it. There is nothing I can do to increase the track height. I can't. I can zoom in and out. Yeah, that's fine in the timeline. I cannot expand it in that direction with my fingers. Similarly with crossfading, although I can pick this up and move it over the top of that one, there's no, no handles turn up to allow me to deal with the crossfade. And even if I bring the pen in, it doesn't do anything in that regard. It doesn't bring up the white handles I need in order to do the crossfading business. It just comes up with the radial menu as before. And that actually brings up a point is that 
what would be really nice, what would get around this, would be the ability to turn off the touch side of things. If I could sort of, with the touch of a latch, turn it back to mouse usage, but using my fingers or using the pen, then those things would appear because it would just be mouse emulation. But because of this overlay of, of touch and radial menus, which is awesome in its place, it denies access to other mouse functions which you could otherwise use. And that's a shame. However, there is, there's, a, there's sort of a workaround with this. Because I'm using the, the full creator's update for Windows 10, it includes a little on-screen trackpad, and that could solve a number of issues. If I bring that up here, I can now... I've got a mouse on the screen without having to get a mouse out or having to attach the keyboard with the trackpad. And now when I go over here, you see that? The little fade bits turn up and I can now do my fading and cross fading. Similarly, when I come over here, I can now extend the track height. I can make them bigger and use it properly. And I can still use my radio menu at this point. The one thing they have added in version two is this customizable toolbar at the top, which is excellent, but it's also not entirely comprehensive. The only things you can pin to the top here are things that are available under these particular menus. Now there are things like keyboard shortcuts that you might want to use that you therefore can't get access to. The one that kills me every time is the ability to loop around a region. All I want to do is loop around a region. So normally speaking, you tap your region or your clip and you press a keyboard shortcut and the loop comes around it. I use that all the time. However, I cannot pin it through here because it doesn't appear under one of these menus. It doesn't. I mean, anything here, see that little pin button, that means I can pin it to the top or unpin it like so. And that's brilliant, but I can't pin a regular keyboard shortcut. So in order to loop around that particular clip, I have to tap in the timeline, pull down to the loop option and then loop it that way. And that's all right. That's not too bad but it's a bit slower and more cumbersome than just pressing Control L, which is what I would do on a keyboard in order to make that happen. And it would be really nice if regular keyboard shortcuts could be stuffed into this toolbar at the top, and it would just make it that little bit more customizable and personable to the way that you are working. There's one other factor which distresses me slightly, which is when you're in this mode or perhaps in the mixer mode where you're launching clips for a performance, is that if you tap a scene and hold on too long, you will select it rather than trigger it. So if I tap and hold, I've selected it. I haven't triggered it. If I tap, it triggers and that's great. But if I want to select something rather than trigger it, I just have to hold it for a little bit longer. The problem is, that in a live performance situation where you're nervous and you're running on adrenaline and the crowd are going wild and you're just trying to hit that drop, that you may just leave your finger on slightly too long. And instead of triggering it, you select it and your drop doesn't happen. And you go up, 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 and then you have to hit it again. And then it comes in half a bar later and it's all just a complete disaster. So when you're using this in live performance, you have to make sure that you tap it. You don't touch it you tap it and that has tripped me up. That has honestly tripped me up in live performance in front of people. And that's quite hard. And sorry to say, that is why I went back to using Ableton Live for a little bit. Well, for a while I started using Yeko, which is a fabulous controller for Ableton Live. And that really kind of opened that up as another way of using multi-touch and live performance. However, Bitwig should be able to do this by itself. But because this happened to me, I had a, a loss of confidence in it. And that's kind of fatal because in live performance, you just want to absolutely be able to rely on your gear. And although I could rely on Bitwig entirely to do the job, I could not rely on my own ability to tap it accurately enough. And that really undermined my confidence in the whole thing. So if there was one thing that Bitwig could do to improve their, their touch facility, which is otherwise fabulous, it would be to sort of lock out that selection choice, that selection ability so that it would always trigger. Like having a live performance mode where I can't select anything or you select something differently 
or I can toggle it on or off or something so that I know that when I touch something, it will trigger and not select. Because there's not a whole lot in it, you know? So yeah, I mean, overall the, the touch environment within Bitwig is excellent. I would just like them to develop it further. All the tools are there. It works like no other door to allow you to move things around with your fingers in such an elegant and an efficient way. It's a great workflow that you can use it without a keyboard and a mouse attached. You can just use it as a tablet and get in there and make music. None of the other major doors could do anything like that, but it needs to keep moving. Bitwig, you need to move it down the line. You need to provide a facility that we can lock live performance mode in so you don't have any possibility of selecting rather than triggering. And you need to develop it in the area of allowing you to change track heights and doing fades and other bits and pieces that you've introduced in version two, but the touch hasn't yet caught up. I would also generally like just a button to latch the whole system on and off to allow me to use my finger or the pen as a mouse pointer if I choose to. Because as it is, your fingers and the pen always produce the radial menu. You have no choice in that. Whether in tablet mode or in regular mode, the touch facility is always on and always there. And it would be great to be able to latch that on or off, depending on what you're doing. Otherwise, it's a completely working and workable, creative, multi-touch environment for your fingers. Bitwig Studio 2.2.2, the ideal companion for your Microsoft Surface Pro. So there you have it. If you found this video helpful in any way or just enjoyable way of passing time, then do consider heading over to my Patreon campaign and think about throwing me a couple of dollars and you could join my special little community of patrons. You could see it as buying me the odd coffee or a beer or a magazine subscription, something like that. But do go and check it out because I'd really appreciate it. But do check out my full review of Bitwig Studio 2, which is in the YouTube channel, along with lots of other videos on using the Surface for music production. So go and check that out. And in the meantime, go and make some tunes. Yeah.